fact, that's just where the corn is going to be planted. Then they have sheet composting to stir it up. Air, aerobic zones. Where does the fence post ride? You ever dig out a fence post? Where does it ride? Up the top, right? The top four inches. You get below that, there's not as much rot. Why is that? That's where all your microbes are mostly at. That's the aerobic microbes. They're the ones that are eating that fence post right there. So you want, you want to basically till this stuff so tightly. We're not doing that in conventional agriculture. We're deep plowing and then plowing some more and plowing some more. Our aerobic zones are becoming anaerobic. And so we have a sheet composting thing there that's growing organic matter, growing humus. That's no-till corn. You see that kid there? Size of that child on the left? This is a drought year in Ohio at 25,000 plants to the acre. This is a worn out farm. This could be done anywhere in the United States. And this was done in the 40s. Nothing new under the sun. And this was done with a lot more primitive equipment than we have today. So, what makes it all to, what makes it work? If you look at, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road is, root systems, okay, roots. And, there, I'm, and I'm giving you this agriculture, I don't know how many people are involved, in, actively involved in agriculture. Like I said earlier, if you're eating, you're involved in agriculture. So I want you to know whether you're a farmer or whether you're an eater that's patronizing a local farm, you need to understand what agriculture is because it's not just food without poison. And I think that's where some of the organics have kind of gone over in this segue detour, in my opinion. Food is not, good food is not just poison free. Good food is nutrient dense, predicated on biological and non-biological systems having a marriage. And I want to just explain some of this to you so you understand. This is, this is a single rye plant. Now this is an annual you have to plant every year. And what do we see? Now think in ecosystems, think ecosystems. Everything is an ecosystem. We're looking at a root system here. Single rye plant has nine main roots, 18,000 root years, 24 meters in length, 12 cubic meters in volume. In a single season, a single rye plant will produce 6,000 miles of roots and root hairs. One single annual. And it does it through pulsing. Everything in nature pulses. Your heart beats a pulse. It grows, receives, grows, receives. And here's the reason why. <clears throat> now, when you get into perennials, clovers, thyme, we get into Kentucky bluegrass and all these other things, it even gets much larger. I'm just going to finish this little segue. Blow up this ecosystem. Here's the root tip. You see all those little dots you barely can see? You see those very transparent root hairs? All these little dots around there, those are bacteria. Now this is the Albrecht model. Nature works on two major food groups. I don't care who you are, whether you're a microbe, you're a person, a cow, a goat, an elephant, doesn't matter. Grow foods, proteins, and go foods, carbohydrates, or, and, or carbons. Nature and the soil works this way. Well, what's happening is that plant is photosynthesizing. We worry about 375 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because it's causing global warming, right? We want to get it down to 275. So there's all this focus on what? Don't emit it. And there's this big argument whether or not volcanoes produce more than car exhaust. We're having the wrong discussion. The discussion is the fact that we need to suck, suck it in back into the earth. That's the problem. And when you get rid of the topsoil, the humus, it doesn't go back in, doesn't build humus, and so as a consequence, think about it, it's 375 parts per million. If I'm standing on top of a pasture right here, and I took a CO2 meter and I went down here, I would measure 4,000 parts per million of carbon dioxide coming right out of that topsoil. And then where does it go? It goes right back into the ground because the leaves have these little openings called stoma or stomata, that suck in the carbon dioxide, and inside the leaf there's this stuff called water, right? And water and carbon dioxide in the chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis occurs, creates sugar, all right? Sugar then gets squirted down into the root. Sugar is carbon or energy. 
Bacteria need energy because they're mostly protein, and you have this huge population explosion of bacteria. So now you have a, a nitrogen cycle. Bacteria are nitrogen. And the plant is feeding these guys sugar from the sunlight to grow this huge population of microbes, which is another word for nitrogen. That's how all these plants that don't get fertilizers from the, from the fertilizer elevator do this. And we can do this. That's why I love perennial polyballs. I'm going to finish up this one little piece here, and then Dennis is going to kick me off the stage. This stuff here was discovered in 1995 by the USDA, glomalin or glomalin. It's the glue of the soil if you dig up a garden and you see those granulated crumb structures in there, you smell it, okay? What do you see there? It's granulated. Crumb structure is made by glue. Glue is produced by a fungi called mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza has to have a root to live on. It's a beneficial parasite. They just discovered this in 1995. It lasts like PVC. I always wonder, Dennis, why you can, you can never get rid of all the organic matter, except if you have a real sandy soil like you have in Florida. Where I come from, we have loamy soils, and abuse after abuse after abuse, and you still take the soil sample, and it's still 1.5 to 2.5% organic matter. It doesn't go away. It seems like it plateaus out. And you wonder, why doesn't it just go down to zero? Well, because the glomalin is like PVC pipe, and it just persists. And if you want to grow humus, you've got to do it with glomalin. It's up to 20% of the carbon of the soil. It creates a PVC water-resistant compound that stays put. They found glomalin in Hawaii soils. That's been there 500 years, they estimate. It's so resistant to breakdown. So this is the key to creating humus, is get these organisms in there. This is what the mycorrhizal looks like. This is the fungal. By the way, this fungus inoculates over 90% of the planet's plant life. That's how ubiquitous it is. That's how critically important it is. Over 90%, we depend on this guy. And what gets rid of it? Well, a variety of things. Like I said earlier, we're looking for water in Mars. We estimate in the soil there's maybe 3 million species of bacteria half that many species of fungi, we've only identified less than 5% of them. And what we've identified are profound. What little we have discovered are going, holy smokes, these guys are amazing. They produce antibiotics. They protect the plant from all kinds of diseases and nematodes. They trap nematodes. They fracture the calcium phosphate bond so you don't have to buy phosphorus. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. These are profoundly powerful organisms, and we've only identified less than 5%. And we're on Mars with a robot. I love it. <laughs> we don't even need a robot to look for them down here. I could look for them if they pay me. I'd look for them. You know? So if you want to get rid, if you want to enhance these guys, what do you do? You avoid extra phosphate, and this is the reason why. Phosphate, phosphorus, now keep in mind, you need phosphorus in your body. Your cows need phosphorus. Your goats need phosphorus. Why? You ever hear of this molecule called ATP? Adenotriphosphate? That's the energy molecule in what? The Krebs cycle. Everybody lives on the Krebs cycle. There's no energy without the Krebs cycle. And ATP is the molecule inside the Krebs cycle. Everybody needs phosphorus to have energy, to get up in the morning, to grow, right? So this mycorrhiza produces enzymes that releases this tied up phosphate that they say is insoluble, therefore you have to use the chemical phosphorus that ties up anyway, that you spend a lot of money for. It's already tied up, and this is the guy that releases the tied up phosphorus that gets into the plant, Gets and then makes ATP for the plant, we eat the plant, the cow eats the plant, and the whole food chain gets this ATP molecule, and all of us are able to go, I'm awake, and I can move my leg, and my heart beats, and my brain's thinking, ATP, denotriphosphate. So we need to have these mycorrhizal in there, plant winter cover crops, rotations, tolerate weeds, cover the earth with green. All right, so I think I covered that piece, and I'll end with this slide. Just to show you, we're talking ecosystems here. This could be your gut, it could be the rumen of your goat, it could be your soil and your